everybody, this is Josh and welcome to another video on iDraw. In this video, um, I want to show you a couple of things. iDraw is a terrific vector graphics editor, much like Illustrator. It's not a photo editor. It's not a bitmap editor like Photoshop. If you want something like that, I highly recommend Pixelmator. And I use that a lot with, with iDraw and I'll, I'll show you some of those uses a little bit later. Also, Acorn is another great one. These are alternatives to Photoshop. I also use Photoshop quite a bit, but these are great photo and bitmap or raster image editors where you can uh, manipulate colors and pixels and cut out things and do a lot of uh, filters and photo effects, all that kind of stuff. And both of these, Pixelmator and Acorn, uh, use uh, layers and editable layer styles, much like Photoshop but they're a fraction of the cost. So I highly recommend those. And using them with iDraw works fantastic. So here we have a document that I've been working on recently. And uh, this is a, a website mock-up. And I do these a lot. And I, I used to use Photoshop primarily for, for, for this kind of stuff. But now I'm, I'm using iDraw a lot for this task. And, and as you see, there's, there's lots of different elements in here. These are all separate little objects. This is all vector uh, vector graphics, aside from these models here, which I cut out using Acorn. Just grab these uh, stock photos and cut out the backgrounds. Not even that great, actually. I could have spent more time on it, but uh, you see I kind of clipped this guy's ear. Um, but then I just copied and pasted them into iDraw. And what iDraw does is it, it, it uh, creates a shape that uses that picture as a fill which is very interesting and so when you when you've uh, got an alpha channel so if you take a jpeg into acorn photoshop pixelmator and cut something out copy and paste it into iDraw, it recognizes that there's transparency in the image and you can set set as transparency mask which means that if i add another fill here for example which i have it will take into account that there are transparent pixels in this image. So if I change the uh, blending mode, which is another thing I draw has fantastic blending modes, just as many as Photoshop, and I can change this to normal, you see that now I have a solid color filling only the non-transparent pixels, and it's leaving the transparent pixels transparent. So um, I've used two fills on this shape and I can go back to color which is what I had it on I think or overlay overlay um, soft light maybe soft light there we go and uh, and so I've I've got that um, color just sort of giving it a, a tone over the image so there's there are some things that you can do like that with your with your photos with your um, pixel based graphics um, so I'm, uh, I'm using some photos that I've cut out like I said in another application brought them into iDraw and this is how I've sort of assembled the the slide that would go into this um, this is kind of a, a shop website it's for a t-shirt company and uh, you see this uh, like a um, apparel tag that I've created here and this tag um, I use the uh, the uh, the space outside of the canvas area a lot in um, in iDraw. Uh, Illustrator, you can do the same thing. Publisher, you can use the same thing. Kind of using the the desktop space um, to hold uh, other material that you're you're not using or that you're using to create something else that you really want to be on the final document. So I use this a lot just to hold uh, objects and uh, so how I've used this for the, the, the tag is I, you know, I've, I've created a, a rounded rectangle, but then I wanted to kind of cut out some pieces, make this uh, have some character. So I, I sort of give it a jagged uh, corner on this side, and then I, I punched a hole in it, but just using the uh, combined path features, created an ellipse and punched that out, created another ellipse to go around it. 
and then I ended up with this tag, which I then added some text on in a different document, saved it as a JPEG, and brought it back in here. So here's here's the uh, JPEG, which is just a big rectangle in here. Um, so all of this I've created with, with just just with iDraw, uh, aside from cutting out the photo in um, a different program. I do have a video, however, that shows you how you can use a vector shape to extrude um, what you want out of an image. Uh, it's about using vector masks, so check that out um, if you haven't seen that yet, which is also a really great way of cutting out images because it leaves you with a vector outline, one that can be manipulated if you've missed a little area or something, or uh, especially with people, you get these little strands of hair and you can get very, very detailed with a vector mask. Um, and then also it preserves the edge of that image, uh, so the edge won't uh, degrade even if the, you blow up the picture really, really big and it starts getting grainy or pixelated. The edge is vector. So uh, I've been using iJar for this. Another little trick that I want to point out is I've got these little t-shirts in here that, uh, that are just really placeholders for what could be buttons. And uh, anytime I create something now in iDraw, you could do this in Photoshop and some of the other programs as well. When you create something like this, a little icon or asset that you might want to use uh, later on with something else, you can pull up the Shapes panel, and uh, and you can create a new library or add it to an existing library. Um, I have mine in here somewhere, right down here. And so with that shape selected, I'll just do this again, you can just hit the little plus button right down here, and it adds that with all of the appearance attributes connected to that shape. So if I had a gradient fill in this shape, it would keep that uh, in the shapes library. And I can just get rid of that one. Um, and then to use these again, you can just simply drag them right onto your canvas. And uh, as you can see, this one I added when it was black. So I can change the colors of them, you can do all kinds of stuff and uh, create your own shape libraries. And I've got several in here. I've done that with my custom vector flames. Uh, these I started with sketches and then I traced them over in, in vector using iDraw. And I can just drag them out and you can see they got all the information there. So I've got a whole library just of my own, my own shapes. Uh, great way to save time when you're creating lots of um, graphics like this and, and if using shapes over and over and over again. I use this a lot with social media buttons. As you see down here, I've got these social media icons down at the bottom. So for stuff like this, business cards, uh, all kinds of things that you want to kind of promote your social links on.